Hey everyone, Sam Cape on here. Uh, I just thought I'd bring you another little tip today as it's going to be part of our training module for these young horses that are in for starting. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to film it and for me to share you my process for tying up. All right. So this is one of the young horses that's in for starting. Um, this would be her ninth day in the program. So she's had five days last week and four days this week. Um, been on her riding and going really nice. But she has, I found when I've been playing with her, had a bit of opposition towards the halter. So when I put a bit of steady pressure on her to come forward a bit quicker than she's ready for, that she does have the tendency to, to, um, to jerk and have a bit of opposition reflex to the pressure of the halter. So I just thought this would be a good opportunity. She might not show it at all today, or she might show it a bit. But I thought I would just cover the main two um, elements to tying up that I feel that most people would benefit from knowing. The first one, number one, is yield. How well does your horse come off of pressure? Um, not only just when it's soft and easy, but actually when they're under a little bit of adversity. And number two is a thing called placement. Now, this is one of the big ones that um, can really make a horse just being uh, good at not pulling back to a horse that's actually great at being confident to be tied up. And here's what I mean by placement. If you've ever had a horse before that you've taught to tie to a post or to a rail and it knows not to pull back, but it's still emotional about being tied up, its mind is somewhere else. It pours the ground, it, um, it you know, rubs up against the fence, it's just constantly calling out and seeming stressed. That's because the horse lacks placement, even though it doesn't lack yield, all right? So just to make this really clear, is placement is about teaching the horse to connect to where it is. Um, in another video, I'll talk about the five connections, but horses can connect to other horses. They can connect to objects. They can connect to patterns. They can connect to the environment or their environment, and they can connect to an aid, something that we put on or apply at a certain time to get their mind back. If a horse is only connected to other horses and you tie them to the post, and then you take that other horse away, they don't have very good placement because their placement is with the other horse. So they get a bit stressed out, call, um, paw, start to do all things that can frustrate us even though the horse is doing it from a place of discomfort or fear. So if I teach horses to connect to the object, which is the post, and find emotional comfort with the rail, okay, that then therefore they've learnt this skill of placement. So let's just break down the, the, the two elements. The first one here is if I can get the horse to drive backward, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put steady pressure on the halter and I'm going to create commotion until she thinks about coming forward. As soon as she thinks about coming forward, I'm going to release. So I'm trying to put her under adversity. So I want to drive her backward. It won't look pretty to start with because I'm trying to just create motion and commotion. Now I'm going to walk backwards and put steady pressure on the halter and tap down on it. This is called the pullback test. Okay. Now, even though I haven't tied her yet, I've been working on her yielding and I reckon a week ago that she would have flipped out when I put that pressure on her. So it's really good to see her thinking that even when there's a lot of pressure in front, she has that thought of coming forward. Okay. I want the horses to realize that even when things in front of them are scary, okay, that we're preparing them for the inevitable, that something's going to bother them in front of them, that they can still think their way forward, okay? There. Now, I wouldn't do this every time because I don't want to cause that level of unnecessary discomfort all the time, but I'm just doing a little test how well can she yield to pressure? So she's actually a little bit heavier backing up today than she is coming forward, which has been her opposite. It's all right. Each day is different. You're just testing. Can she come forward even when there's commotion on the rain? She's not doing too bad. So that's number one. How well is your horse yielding in the pullback test? Now, number two is the thing called placement, where we're going to make, where they're going to stand, basically somewhere to connect to and be calm with. So if I just get this mare sending around me, 
between me and the rail. Okay, she wants to face up. They make a big deal of it. Just send her back. Now, when I feel like she's looking for somewhere to stop, this is my opportunity to get her to have placement. So I'm going to send her to a particular post, pushing her muzzle. As soon as she thinks there, release. She's thinking to me. She's thinking away. There, release. She's thinking away. She needs to still move her feet. You see, she was looking to connect to everywhere else but that rail. Land her at that post. She's looking at me going, should I connect to you? I'm like, that's nice, but at the moment I want you to connect to that post. Connect to that post. She's not sure what to do. She's already starting to stress a little bit. She's moving around. She's looking for an escape. She's turning and facing. She's going, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's a fence. I'm going, yep, in a minute here you're going to realize that that fence right there is your best friend. Because when she connects to it, all the pressure is going to go away. Create a little bit of discomfort with my rope. You can see straight away that she's already feeling like the fence is a trap. Now I could make her stand there, but I'm trying to read where her mind's at in this moment. And I can tell that she hasn't worked out that there's any connection with that particular post yet. Anytime I feel she's trying to connect to it, I take the pressure off. I, she didn't connect it one bit, so create a little bit of discomfort. Not a lot, just a little bit. Come through here. Change direction. Head back over there. Release. There. Nope. There. Nope. There. No, don't come towards me. Push which zone's not connecting. At the moment, it's the nose. Push the muzzle. Push the muzzle. Push the muzzle. Push the neck. Push the muzzle. There's that opposition. So I'm going to create a little bit more discomfort. As soon as she moves her body toward, here comes all the stress. She wasn't great with float loading. Okay, so as soon as, as soon as she feels that there's nowhere to go, out comes the emotion. See, she's, she's really just looking at me, kind of really wanting to connect to me, and I don't want to make her feel wrong for that. However, when I walk away, there's, it's no good her going, but I want to come with you because that's where you'll get the pullback. A lot of horses will only connect when you're to the post, when the humans are near them. As soon as they walk away, right, the connection goes and the horse goes, I'm now I'm lost again. You could do this with a tree. You could do this with a pole that's in your shed. You want to teach them that when you send them to that pole, they have this endorphin release where they just relax and they go, oh, I love this tree. I love this pole. Anytime I'm here, it's made me feel great. It's made me feel relaxed. She's getting closer, but she just can't help but want to connect to the human. I want her to connect to the pole. Now she's wanting now to side pass to the fence because she thinks that's the answer. It's all physical at the moment. Here comes the opposition. Here comes the opposition. Here comes the opposition. Come off the pressure. There, release. Okay, so all the stuff's starting to come to the surface now. This is all the stuff that's going to be an issue when you tie them. She's still going, is it you? Am I connecting to you? It's like, it's not me. It's not me. I'm just trying to convince her to try something there. Try something else. Just try something else. Now, she's standing really awkward. But that was the first time she looked at the pole and just paused and had a thought. Everything was starting to be emotional driven again. If she keeps getting crooked here, don't come on top of me. Just create some discomfort towards the muzzle. As soon as she looks at the pole there, pressure off, pressure off. Relax, don't look at me. I'm going to walk away in a minute. I need you to fall in love with the pole. 
Now I'm just trying to convince her mind to go there. There. Watch your attention. It's on me. Now it's thinking towards the pole. Now it's thinking towards the pole. She's licking her lips now. She's starting to go, maybe I should just calm down and try to process the answer. There. Now I'm going to relax. Now as soon as I moved, she disconnected from the pole and she looked at me. That's a nice thing, but at the moment it's not that helpful. If we think about those five things that horses can connect to, horses, objects, patterns, environments, and or aids, if your horse is only strong, it only has a connection to one particular thing. Say it'll only calm down if you put it on a pattern. It'll only calm down if it's got another horse with it. It'll only calm down if it's going around an object like a barrel or it's connecting to a cow or something. And as soon as those that connection's gone, your horse emotionally falls apart. It's just because they're weaker in the other four areas. So if you get them to where you say, can you put your attention on a pole? And as soon as they do that, they go, drop their head, relax, and they're confident. You're riding with another horse, you say, now you can connect to the other horse. You take them away from that other horse and you start walking them in a figure eight or a serpentine and they connect to the pattern and they automatically calm down. You're going to have a lot of success at keeping a horse calm in multiple circumstances. Now she's making a change. She's still a bit leery that every time I move, she feels that she has to connect to me. There. So now I'm going to come in, start moving around her, and seeing if she can stay connected to that pole. I wouldn't tie her up yet because if I tried tying her up now and walked away, I'd be promoting her to pull back. And this is then this is there where people think that they've just got an issue with the horse's response to the halter. But if you're pulling their mind away every time you walk off or you approach them, we're accidentally instigating the pullback. Okay. So now I moved away, and as soon as I moved, she connected to me, which was all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send her again around and put her back to her pole and encourage her to find relaxation with the pole. Don't connect to me. I like you. You're lovely. You're good to look at. Don't connect to me. I want you to think that the pole at the moment is your relief. Start over here. Not at those other horses. There. There. Yeah, money. So right there, she really stuck her nose on it nice. Gonna come in. I might help her by lowering her head just a little bit. Try to get her off that last bit of adrenaline. There we go. Might move around to some. This might take her a couple of days to really find value in it. But if I was gonna um, tie up five of the young horses in here, I'd just put them at the same pole. They have to give them their own pole for the first four to six days of being tied up. And then once they'd established that when they come in here and they all relax and connect to the pole, then I might move them around. But there's no reason that you couldn't have a horse tied to every single pole in this paddock and in this pen, take one away and the other horses wouldn't mind in the least just because they've actually got their connection with the pole and not with the other horses. Therefore, they don't really feel alone, so to speak, right? So as she she starts getting better at that, I start moving my moving. As soon as I walked away, I don't make her feel wrong. I say, thanks for wanting to follow me, but that's not going to be useful once you're tied up. Change direction, put her back there, release. Don't look at me. Don't look to me for your security at this point. Even though I've helped her with a lot of things at this, at this point. There, she softened a little as she just started to drop her head and soften. I might just remind her just to come off the, the adrenaline. She's pretty sensitive mare. She's pretty worried about a lot of things. Going to move around a bit now.
one of the tips is that when you are disconnecting, just take your hand and slide off their hip and go walk away with some conviction. Now she's still followed, but sometimes when people walk away from them tied up and we do it real tentatively, like we creep away trying not to get them to panic why they're tired or to follow us, and that actually encourages them to get more leery. Just walk away with some confidence. Put her back to her pole when she's thinking about it there. Okay, come back in, rub on her, change eyes, see if she'll stay. Now she's starting to get the idea. If she looks at me, watch, I'm just going to point, use a bit of driving pressure with my stick. As soon as she thinks about the post again, release. Horses that are really like sensitive and a bit cautious, a lot of times they don't want to take their eyes off you in case you do something that, that startles them or scares them. And I love that she's got that draw, but at the moment I just don't want it to be directed towards me. I want her to fall in love with that post right there. You move over a little bit, don't look over here. Now in the space of this video, I might not get, it, get her to completely let down at the post, but it wouldn't take too long, maybe a session or two, and she'll start to connect to that rail. Just push your nose back there, there, release. She's thinking about me, now she's thinking about the rail. The horse just jumped over there, there, good. Now that makes it, um, even though we feel like the connection and the relaxation could be a little bit stronger, I'm at a point now where I feel like she's reasonably connected. So from here what I do is I'd go around this pole. So it's gone all the way around the pole. Just there she got a little bit tight and backed up. Just gonna hold. Here's where it could go bad so I just gotta wait. There she made a good choice. And then I come under her lead rope and I just lay it over the post. So if she needed to really pull back, that that rope would just slide with her, but not come undone. And then I just start moving around. And over the space of a few days, she's not gonna feel the need to move or the fact that she feels alone is because she's connected to the pole. As you can see, I've lost her connection with the pole. It's back on me. So I'm just going to create some motion on this side. And I'm just going to keep doing this until she stops thinking about following where I am and reconnecting to the pole. Wait for her to connect to the pole. Wait for her to connect to the pole. There she goes, and leave her. Now she's certainly not relaxed about it just yet, but if I just gently keep making a pattern out of this, she'll get to where her confidence and her relaxation will be relative to where she's tied up and not to where I am or not to where other horses are. All right? So there's just a little tip for you guys on Preparing a horse for tying up, best skill a horse, one of the best skills a horse can have, and a lot of horses um, could do with could do with more of it and could do with more help understanding how to do it better. So stage one or phase one is the yielding process, and then stage two is the placement. Hope you guys get something out of that and uh, look forward to seeing horses tied up all over the place. Thanks guys.